I remember that day like it was just yesterday, even though I was only six years old. My name is Julie, and that day changed my life forever. Dad had gone on another business trip, leaving mom and me alone in our house. I was playing with my dolls in the living room when I heard the doorbell ring. Mom rushed to answer it, her face lighting up when she saw who was there. Julie, honey, go to your room and play, she said, her voice shaking with excitement. I did as she asked, but curiosity got the better of me. I peeked around the corner and saw a tall man I didn't recognize. Mom was quickly packing clothes into a suitcase, moving faster than I had ever seen her move before. Mom zipped up her suitcase and headed for the door. I stepped out from where I was hiding, feeling confused and scared. Mommy, where are you going? I asked. I have to go away for a while, sweetie, she said, not quite looking me in the eyes. Be a good girl for daddy, okay? And just like that, she was gone no hug, no kiss goodbye, just the sound of a car engine starting and fading away. I stood there, staring at the closed door, waiting for her to come back, but she didn't. The house felt bigger and emptier than ever before. As night came, I grew more scared. I tried to turn on the lights, but I was too short to reach the switches. The darkness seemed to close in around me, and I started to cry. Mommy, Daddy, I called out over and over, but no one came. I don't know how many days passed. I was hungry and thirsty, and the dark felt alive with monsters waiting to get me. I cried until I had no tears left, then huddled in a corner, shaking with fear. Finally, I heard voices outside. Our neighbor, Mrs. Jeremy, was talking to someone. I've been hearing a child crying for days, she said. I'm worried something might have happened. The door burst open, and suddenly the house was full of people policemen, neighbors, and finally my dad. Jen, he cried, scooping me up in his arms. Oh God, Julie, I'm so sorry. I held on to him tightly, crying with relief. Over his shoulder, I saw a policeman holding a piece of paper. Mr. James, the policeman said seriously, I think you should read this. Dad gently set me down and took the note. As he read it, his face fell. He suddenly looked much older, like years had passed in just a few moments. She's gone, he whispered. Amy's gone. She left us. The next few weeks were a blur. Dad took time off work to stay with me. We had lots of visitors' relatives, friends, and a nice lady who Dad said was a child psychologist. Jen has been through a traumatic experience, the psychologist explained to Dad. It's normal for her to have some fears and anxieties after what happened. And boy, did I have fears. I couldn't sleep without a light on the dark terrified me. I panicked whenever Dad had to leave, scared that he wouldn't come back either. The fear never really went away. It became part of who I was, just like my brown hair or green eyes. I became Julie James, the girl whose mother left her, the girl afraid of the dark, the girl always worried about being abandoned. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, life started to feel normal again, but a new kind of normal. Dad and I became a team of two, figuring out how to live in this new world without mom. He learned to braid my hair, he wasn't very good at first, but he got better with practice. And I learned how to make his coffee just the way he liked it. Then everything changed when Dad met Lauren. I was eight years old when he introduced me to her. Lauren had kind eyes and a warm smile that made me feel comfortable right away. Over the next few weeks, Lauren became a regular part of our lives. She didn't try to replace my mom, which I appreciated more than I could say. Instead, she found her own place in our little family. One day, I overheard Dad talking to her on the phone. I think it's time, Lauren. Will you move in with us? Lauren moved in a week later. She didn't try to be my mom, but she became something just as important a friend. She helped me with my homework, braided my hair much better than Dad ever could, and always made sure there was a nightlight in my room. As the years passed, other things changed too. Dad's company became successful, and suddenly we were moving to a big new house in a fancy neighborhood. I got my own room with a walk-in closet and a view of the backyard pool. 
but some things didn't change I still slept with the nightlight. I still worried every time Dad went on a business trip, and sometimes late at night, I'd see him looking at old photos of Mom. My 11th birthday started like any other day. I woke up to the smell of pancakes, Lauren's special birthday treat for me. Dad was home from work, and we were planning a small party later. Everything seemed perfect. Then the doorbell rang. As I walked into the living room, I froze. Standing there, looking older but unmistakable, was my mother. Next to her was a little girl, about six years old, holding a teddy bear and looking around with wide eyes. Amy, Dad said, his voice tight. What are you doing here? Mom took a deep breath. Larry, I am so sorry for everything. I know I have no right to be here, but she gestured to the little girl. This is Maria. She's your daughter. The room went silent. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Dad's face showed a mix of emotions, shock, anger, disbelief, and then something else. My daughter, he repeated. Mom nodded. I was pregnant when I left. I didn't know then, I swear, Larry. I've made so many mistakes. I'm not asking you to forgive me, but Maria, she deserves to know her father. I watched as Dad knelt down to the little girl's level. Hi, Maria, he said softly. I'm your dad. Maria looked up at him shyly. Hi, she whispered. As Dad talked to Maria, I noticed Lauren standing in the doorway, her face pale. She turned and walked away quickly. I wanted to follow her, but I felt stuck, unable to move. The next few hours were a blur lots of adult conversations I wasn't supposed to hear, raised voices, and tears. I hid in my room, hugging my knees to my chest, trying to make sense of it all. Later that evening, Dad came to talk to me. Julie, he said, sitting on the edge of my bed, I know this is a lot to take in. Your mom, she's made some big mistakes. But Maria, she's innocent in all this. She's your sister. I've decided to give your mom another chance, for Maria's sake. The next day, I watched from my window as Lauren packed her car. She looked up and saw me watching, with tears in her eyes. She waved goodbye. I waved back, feeling like a part of me was leaving with her. Mom and Maria moved in that same day. Maria took the guest room, and Mom took her old place in Dad's room. It felt wrong, like she was erasing the last six years as if they never happened. The years that followed were complicated. Mom was back, but it wasn't the happy family reunion I had hoped for. When I was younger, I might have dreamed about having a close relationship with my mom, but it never really happened. She adored Maria, giving her all the attention and love, but with me, there was always a distance, a feeling of awkwardness that never went away. Maria was just a kid. She didn't ask to be part of this complicated situation. I tried not to be resentful, but it was tough, especially when I saw how easily she fit into mom and dad's life in a way I never seemed to. By the time I turned 19, I was more than ready to leave for college. I decided to study zoology because animals were always easier for me to understand than people. They didn't judge, they didn't have complicated emotions, and they didn't come with messy family histories they just were. The day I left for college was bittersweet. Dad hugged me tightly, his eyes misty. I'm so proud of you, Julie, he said. You're going to do great things. Mom gave me an awkward pat on the shoulder and said, good luck, but her smile didn't quite reach her eyes. Maria, now 14, rolled her eyes and muttered, finally, I get my own room. I pretended not to hear her and focused on Dad's warm embrace. College was a relief. For the first time, I was away from the tension at home and the constant reminder of my complicated family situation. I threw myself into my studies, finding peace in the world of animals and nature. But even though I did well in school, I struggled socially. Years of feeling like an outsider in my own family had left a mark. I was quiet, reserved, and always afraid of getting too close to people. What if they left, like mom had? What if they replaced me, like Maria seemed to have done? Instead, I found comfort at the small zoo on campus where I volunteered in my spare time, caring for the animals. 
There was a particularly grumpy old llama named Larry who became my favorite. He didn't like most people, but he seemed to tolerate me. The years at college went by quickly, and before I knew it, I was graduating. As I stood in my cap and gown, diploma in hand, I scanned the crowd. Dad was there, beaming with pride. Mom and Maria were there too, clapping politely. Congratulations, Jalee, Mom said stiffly. Your father and I have been talking, and, well, we think it's time you started looking for your own place. You know, spread your wings. I felt like I had been punched in the stomach. I looked at Dad, hoping he would disagree with Mom but he just looked away, his face full of pain. Right, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Of course, I'll start looking right away. The days after my graduation were tense. I was back in my childhood home, but it didn't feel welcoming at all. Dad tried his best to make me feel comfortable, but Mom and Maria made it clear that I was not wanted there. Julie, have you started looking for jobs yet? Mom would ask during breakfast, her tone pretending to be sweet. You know, it's important to get your foot in the door early, Maria would add, with a smirk. Yeah, and maybe you could find your own place too. It's getting kind of cramped around here. Nights were the hardest. I still needed my nightlight to sleep, something Maria didn't miss. One evening, as I was getting ready for bed, she barged into my room. Seriously? She scoffed, pointing at my nightlight. You're 23, and you still need that? No wonder you don't have any friends. I felt my cheeks burn with shame. Leave me alone, Maria, I muttered, but she wasn't finished. The next day at dinner, she brought it up again, this time in front of everyone. Hey, Mom Dad, she said, her voice dripping with fake concern. Don't you think Julie should see a therapist or something? I mean, she's an adult who's afraid of the dark and can't make friends. That's not normal, right? Something inside me snapped. Years of bottled up hurt and anger burst out. You want to know why I'm like this, Maria? I said, my voice shaking. It's because when I was six, my mother left me alone in a dark, empty house for days. Do you have any idea what that does to a child? The table went silent. Dad stared down at his plate, his face full of guilt and pain. Mom's eyes widened in shock and then quickly filled with tears. How dare you? She cried, her voice rising dramatically. How can you be so cruel and vindictive? I've tried so hard to make amends, to be a family again, and this is how you repay me? As mom continued her tearful rant and Maria smirked triumphantly, I realized something I couldn't live here anymore. This wasn't my home, and these people, they weren't my family, not really. From that day on, I threw myself into job hunting with new determination. Finally, a glimmer of hope, I had an interview scheduled at a small wildlife rehabilitation center. It wasn't glamorous, but it was a start. I left the house that morning feeling cautiously optimistic. But when I arrived, I found a hastily scribbled note on the door. Interviews canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. We apologize for the inconvenience. Disappointed, I headed home earlier than expected. I unlocked the front door and heard voices coming from the living room, Mom and Maria deep in conversation. I was about to let them know I was home when I heard my name. If Chuli wasn't around at all, Maria was saying, I mean, it's not fair that she gets any of Dad's money. She's not even really part of this family. I know, sweetie, Mom replied in a calming voice, but we have to be patient. Once she moves out, it'll be easier to convince your father to change his will. We just need to keep pushing her to leave. It felt like a bucket of ice water had been poured over me. They didn't just want me out of the house, they wanted me out of the family entirely. And they were after my inheritance, too. I sat on my bed, my mind racing. What should I do? Should I tell Dad? But would he believe me over Mom and Maria? He had forgiven Mom for leaving us before, and he loved them both. Maybe he'd take their side. My first bit of luck came when I saw a job posting for the Oklahoma City Zoo. They needed a zoologist to help with their wildlife rehabilitation program. It wasn't a fancy job, but it was exactly what I had been trained for. 
I sent in my application right away, and to my surprise and happiness, I got called in for an interview. On the day of the interview, I stood in front of the zoo's main gate, taking deep breaths to calm my nerves. The interview went better than I could have imagined. The head zoologist, Dr. Frank, seemed impressed with my knowledge and passion. You've got the job, Julie, she said with a warm smile. Welcome to the team. I could have cried with relief finally, something was going right. Working at the zoo was everything I'd hoped for and more. I spent my days caring for injured wildlife, educating visitors about conservation, and even helping with research projects. In the evenings, I'd return to my tiny apartment, which I was able to rent with the money I saved. To combat the loneliness, I started joining online forums for animal lovers and people with similar interests. That's where I met Scott. Scott was from the same city, shared my love for animals, and had a great sense of humor that made me laugh even on my toughest days. We started chatting regularly, sharing stories about our day, and discussing everything from the latest conservation efforts to our favorite books. One day, Scott suggested we exchange photos. With trembling hands, I sent him a recent picture of me at the zoo. He replied with a photo of himself, he had kind eyes, and a warm smile that made my heart skip a beat. But as much as I enjoyed our conversations, the idea of meeting in person or even admitting my growing feelings scared me. What if he rejected me once he got to know the real me? What if he left, just like mom did? Around this time, I started talking with Hannah, a girl I met on a support forum for people with childhood trauma. She understood my fears in a way no one else had before. You know what helps me, Hannah wrote one day. I write emails to the people I can't talk to in real life. I pour out everything I'm feeling all the things I wish I could say, but I don't send them. I just save them as drafts. It's really healing. Taking Hannah's advice, I started writing emails to Dad. In them, I told him everything how I overheard Mom and Maria's conversation, how hurt I was that he didn't seem to notice me anymore, and how I felt like an outsider in my own family. I also started writing to Scott. In these emails, I allowed myself to be vulnerable in a way I couldn't be in our chats. Scott, I wrote, I think I'm falling for you, but I'm scared. I'm scared of letting anyone get close to me. I'm scared of being hurt again. These emails, too, remained unsent, my feelings safely tucked away in my drafts folder. Dad would call occasionally, his voice a mix of concern and confusion. Julie, honey, he'd say, why don't you come over for dinner this weekend? We miss you. Each time, I'd come up with an excuse. Sorry, Dad, I've got a big project at work. Or, I'm not feeling well this week, maybe next time. Then, one Thursday afternoon, I was at the mall picking up some essentials when I heard a familiar voice call my name. Julie, is that you? I turned around, and there she was Lauren, my former stepmother. She looked older, but her kind eyes were just the same. Before I knew it, we were hugging, years of separation melting away in an instant. That's when I noticed a young boy standing beside her, looking up at us curiously. This is my nephew Justin, Lauren explained, ruffling the boy's hair affectionately. I'm raising him now, Lauren explained, her voice soft. My sister passed away last year. Over coffee, Lauren filled me in on her life after she and dad split up. She had been on her own until her sister's death left Justin in her care. After that, we started meeting regularly sometimes just the two of us, sometimes with Justin. One day, Lauren called and urgently asked me to look after Justin for the evening. Justin arrived at my apartment, backpack in tow. As I prepared dinner in my tiny kitchen, I could hear him tapping away on my laptop in the living room. I told him he could play games if he finished his homework. When I came out of the kitchen with two plates of spaghetti, I found Justin looking guilty, his face pale. Julie, he said, his voice trembling, I did something bad. I was curious, and I saw these emails in your drafts folder, and I sent them. All of them, I'm so sorry. The world seemed to spin around me. 
Those emails, my private thoughts, my deepest feelings had been sent out into the world. To Dad, to Scott, I felt like I couldn't breathe. That night, after Justin left, I lay in bed, my mind racing. What would Dad think? And Scott, oh God, Scott. My phone pinged with a message notification. It was from Scott, but I couldn't bring myself to read it. What if he was disgusted by my feelings? What if he never wanted to speak to me again? I barely slept that night, tossing and turning, imagining all the worst-case scenarios. A few days later, my phone rang. It was Dad. Julie, he said, his voice serious. We need to talk. Can you meet me at the cafe near your old high school? My heart pounded as I sat across from Dad in the small cafe. He looked tired, his face showing lines I hadn't noticed before. I got your emails, he said quietly. Julie, I had no idea you were feeling this way about your mother, about Maria, about everything. I couldn't meet his eyes, feeling a mix of shame and fear inside me. Julie, look at me, Dad said, his voice gentle but firm. I looked up, surprised to see tears in his eyes. I love you more than anything in this world. I'm so sorry I made you feel like you weren't important to me. That was never, ever my intention. We talked for hours, really talked, in a way we hadn't in years. We talked about mom's return, about Maria, and about how I had felt pushed aside and forgotten. Dad listened really listened, occasionally wiping away a tear. Finally, he stood up. I need some time to process all this, he said, but Julie, we're going to figure this out you and me. As I watched him walk away, I felt a mix of relief and nervousness. What was going to happen now? But I didn't have much time to think about it because my phone rang again, it was Scott. Julie, he said, his voice warm but a little nervous, I got your email, and I feel the same way. I've been too scared to say it, but I really like you. Would you like to meet for coffee? My heart soared. Yes, I said, surprised by how steady my voice was. I'd love to. The next day, I met Scott at a small coffee shop. He was even more handsome in person, with a kind smile that put me at ease right away. We talked for hours about our fears, dreams, and pasts. For the first time in years, I felt truly seen and understood. As the autumn leaves began to fall, my phone rang one crisp morning. It was Dad. Julie, he said, his voice warm, but with something serious underneath. I'd like you to come to Thanksgiving dinner. It's important to me that you're there. Something in his tone made me agree. Thanksgiving Day arrived, and I stood on the doorstep of my childhood home, my heart pounding. Scott had offered to come with me for support, but I felt this was something I needed to face on my own. Mom opened the door her smile not quite reaching her eyes. Julie, how nice of you to join us. Maria, lounging on the couch, barely looked up from her phone. Oh, you came. Dad emerged from the kitchen and hugged me warmly. I'm glad you're here, sweetheart, he whispered. As we sat down to dinner, the tension was thick. Mom and Maria exchanged glances, their smiles forced and fake, but Dad seemed unusually calm. Just as mom started to serve the Oklahoma, dad cleared his throat. Before we begin, there's something we need to discuss. He reached down beside his chair and pulled out a thick manila folder. Dad began laying out documents on the table. Amy Maria, he said, I've known for a while that something wasn't right, so I did some investigating. He held up a bank statement. First, I discovered regular withdrawals from our accounts that I didn't make quite substantial amounts, in fact. Mom's face turned pale, and Maria suddenly found her plate very interesting. Dad continued, pulling out another document. I also hired a private investigator, Amy. He provided photographic evidence of your meetings with a certain gentleman at the Oklahoma City Hotel. Mom gasped, her hand flying to her mouth. Larry, I could explain, but Dad wasn't finished. He pulled out one final document, his hand shaking slightly. I had a DNA test done, Dad said quietly. Maria isn't my biological daughter. The room went silent. Maria's phone slipped from her hands and clattered to the floor. Mom looked like she might faint. 
I've already spoken to my lawyer, Dad continued, his voice steady, even though his eyes showed emotion. Amy, I'm filing for divorce, and I'm afraid I'll have to ask both you and Maria to leave this house. Mom found her voice, anger replacing her shock. You can't do this. I'll take you for everything you've got. Dad's expression hardened. Actually, Amy, you won't. If you try to claim any property, I'll countersue and demand repayment of all the money you've taken, plus what I've spent raising Maria. My lawyer assures me I have a very strong case. Tears streamed down Mom's face as she realized the seriousness of the situation. Maria sat in stunned silence, her world falling apart around her. In the days that followed, Mom and Maria moved out. Dad and I began to rebuild our relationship, stronger than ever before. We started having weekly dinners, long talks, and even began planning a father-daughter road trip. One day over coffee, Dad hesitantly brought up Lauren. I've been thinking a lot about the past, he said, about the mistakes I made. I reached out to Lauren to apologize. We've been meeting for coffee, talking things through. I smiled, genuinely happy for him. That's wonderful, Dad. Lauren is an amazing woman. As for me, things with Scott were going better than I could have ever imagined. He was patient, kind, and understood my fears and insecurities. With his support, I was even starting to work through my issues in therapy.